All right, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, meaning my voice, your voice of the fan, uh, your comments, your questions, and your discussion and debate. And of course, we bring on the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers across the industry. And we've got Brandon Cooper on the line. You can catch him right here on YouTube on College Football Vids. Brandon, how you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today, Mark Rogers. Yes, thank you. Had to get that up there. Oh, yeah. Uh, that probably opens and closes every segment, I'm guessing. You got it. All right. Good stuff. So Miami football, before we jump into this team, the 2018 edition, I just got to find out a little background here. I'm, I'm curious to know, how'd you fall in love with the Canes? Why Miami? And how long has that been? Okay, awesome. That's a question I actually love to answer, uh, especially I, I live in Tennessee still currently. A lot of people don't know that. And um, it's actually, uh, I'll make a long story super short here. Uh, basically, the first time I ever watched Miami play uh, was back in 01. I'm sure most of you know uh, in detail about that year. But uh, I was actually around 12 years old. Uh, no one in my family liked sports, watched sports. Uh, I was actually actually just flipping through the channels. And I asked my mom, hey, can, can we watch that game? And uh, we watched it. There was something about it, you know, the the swag, the, the way the guys carried themselves, kind of the way they just dominated on the field. And I'm going to be honest, green and orange are my two favorite colors. So, you know, kind of went hand in hand. And uh, it really just went on from there. I went on and just started following Miami. It's a real difficult thing to do living in Tennessee, I can tell you, because uh, I'm sure if any of you have visited here or live here, this is Vol country, this is orange country. So it's hard being a Miami Hurricanes fan here, but I love it and honestly wouldn't have it any other way. So it's an incredible story from the standpoint of most people are influenced by their dad, a family member, somebody around them, a group of friends. You were influenced by nothing. You flip on the TV and you just catch the, the, the vibe, the environment, the, the swag, the feel of the game and the excitement, and you never give it up. You latch right onto it. Uh, and that's, yep. that's pretty cool. Do you remember what uh, game that was in particular? Uh, it was the actually the national championship okay, game against you Nebraska. Know, that, you, it was crazy enough that you could feel it through the TV. I mean, you didn't even have to be there. That's what's crazy about it. And that's honestly, that's a day I'll never forget. What's crazy about that for me is just that it wasn't a very good football game. Right. <laughs> yeah. Not not too well. No. You know, no, we, we won't we won't go into the dominant team. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the final was 37 14, and it was nothing close to a 37 to 14 game. It was like 31 nothing before you could um, get uh, settled, and Miami could have thrown up 60. Right, Those easily. Type deals. And of course, one of the best football teams we've seen in recent uh, memory uh, in the college ranks. Now, I'm guessing, Brandon, since you're there in Tennessee, you have to make sure that when you purchase your Miami gear, that you get a little green in there. Otherwise you're going to blend in with everybody else and people are going to mistake that you're just another Vols fan. Exactly. Yep. I, I wear the orange and green with pride. Uh, I don't try to hide it. Uh, it's something that I wear very proudly. So yeah, you, you were in, inducted there um, and introduced to Miami football at a good time with of course, uh, two dominant teams right out of the gate in 2001 and 2002 uh, had a bowl drought there for a long time of what, 10 or 11 years in regards to winning a bowl game. Um, do you have hope that you're getting closer with Mark Rick on the sideline and with the better recruiting classes in recent years of putting those Al Golden years way behind you and getting back to the elite? Yeah, most definitely. It has been a, a rough road since then, uh, since those years. But uh, I do think that we are getting back on track uh, to winning, and we, we know that we can win. We actually kind of expect to win uh, most of the games. So we kind of have a different outlook on it. Uh, I do know there are actually a lot of people who are on the other side of the ball who I see actually a lot of people, believe it or not, that aren't a very big fan of Mark Rick, uh, most uh, exclusively due to the fact of he's calling the plays and everyone wants an offensive coordinator. Uh, that's kind of a whole different argument you can get into with that. Uh, but I think that we are on the right road. I mean, starting out his first season being nine and four, and then coming up the next season ten and three. Even though we ended kind of rough with that bowl game loss and winning several or losing several games in a row, I still think I'm noticing improvement year after year. So it's kind of hard to argue with that, in my opinion. 
Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, bringing on the best bloggers and broadcasters in the industry to talk up the game we love. We've got uh, Brandon Cooper from College Football Vids on the line. So catch his YouTube channel right here for Miami football coverage. And uh, you mentioned the uh, transition from the first year to second year of Mark Richt going from nine wins to 10. If you would just have laid out for Miami fans, okay, you're going to go 10 and three. You're going to go to the Orange Bowl. You're going to win the Coastal. You're going to lose the ACC championship game to the team that just won the national championship the year before. They'd probably be like, okay, definite step in the right direction. I'll sign up for that. But just kind of the way it went down with the big 10-0 and 0 start that was a little shaky at times, but the two best teams you played, you dominated in Virginia Tech and Notre Dame. So you showed up for the big games. You get to 10-0. and 0. You have the disappointing letdown against a pit team that you're obviously much better than. And then it wasn't so much that you lost to Clemson because everybody expected that. But if it would have been a, a 21-10 game or 27-17 game where you would have competed, maybe that's where the narrative kind of turned on. What are we doing with this offense? We don't have the right quarterback. We don't have the right play caller. We put up a field goal in that game. And then, of course, it gets capped off with the loss to Wisconsin. Yeah, and you're definitely correct on that. I think that uh, most people will agree when I say that we're probably a year or two ahead of what most people expected. But in my opinion, I think what happened is once we started, really once we put that that beat down on Notre Dame at home, everyone really got just super excited and kind of really just expected much more than we really thought before the season started. And I think everybody honestly got their hopes up and kind of just got them crushed when we lost to Pitt and then in that Clemson game. And I think that they kind of expected more really than they should have. I mean, I'm going to be honest, everybody wants a national championship. Everybody wants to win all of their games, of course. But I think going from nine and four, then going to 10 and three, making an appearance in the ACC championship game. I think, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, of course, that's not the end goal, but I am happy overall with that result. And I think coming up in this 2018 season, even in just improving on that, even as you mentioned, I'm even, I'll, I'll just be honest, I'll put it out there, moving into the 2018 season, even another ACC championship appearance and making that an actual game versus whoever that is, I still think that's a step in the right direction, even if we don't win it. What strikes me odd about the season we just recapped is the Notre Dame game because uh, Miami dominates that game. I'm sure Miami fans, and I know from talking to many of you, just relished in that win because you hate Notre Dame. That's a rivalry that goes back to those great teams in the late 80s. Uh, and you just, just, blasted them just dominated at the line of scrimmage just were extremely impressive and then you look at what notre dame did the rest of the season like nobody made them look bad they beat lsu they beat usc they beat north carolina state they beat a lot of really good teams they were a really good team and you guys crushed them so i don't know that impresses me but i also kind of think it was probably an aberration to a certain extent um but going into this season, yeah, that was going to be my question. So you, 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 you jumped me on that one and that's a good work out of you because what do you do from here? Because the leap from what you did last season to actually winning the ACC, considering that Clemson's the big dog on the other side might be uh, a little bit more of a leap than we could expect or anticipate. Um, but that would be the, the next jump in terms of something that you could point to in the standings or the scoreboard. But maybe, like you say, a more competitive ACC championship game against what we expect to be one of the best two or three or four teams in the country in Clemson might be a good goal. Exactly. Yeah, of course, winning is the end goal. Uh, winning is what we want to do, winning every game. But I Believe it or not, I would be satisfied with an actual uh, competitive game in the ACC championship. I believe as long as we stay in the talks for the college football playoff and uh, overall we're dominating the ACC, making an appearance in that game, I would actually consider that a successful season. And I would like to add, I think the Notre Dame game, I think there was a little bit of magic on those Miami Knights jerseys, the black. I think we should wear those every game possibly and make all of our games at nights and on prime time. And then I think we'll be good to go. Well, you came back with those against Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got me on that one. I was going to call you on that one. But uh, yeah, you, you got a point. It was an impressive performance that I did not expect in any way. 
that was complete domination. Got Brandon Cooper on the line. You can catch him at College Football Vids where he talks Miami football uh, all the time. So, Brandon, when we look at this team, the, the name that comes up over and over and over again, uh, looking back at the mistakes that were made and the shortcomings, is Malik Rozier and Miami fans generally discount him as having a shot at winning this quarterback job. But he did throw 26 touchdown passes and for over 3,000 yards and did make some plays. Uh, where, where do you think this stands? And are you a guy that says, hey, we saw enough last year that we don't need to see this again? Cozy Perry or Jaron Williams needs to win this job. Or Malik, he played well for two-thirds of the season. Maybe he's got a shot and maybe he deserves a shot. Yeah, that's a the the QB battle for Miami is definitely a very uh, touchy subject when you get into that. Um, I will argue that Rozier, of course, does have the experience under his belt. I mean, he he's played under the lights, he's played in some big primetime games, and uh, I feel like that does play a big part, especially with the opening game being against LSU. Uh, you can do a lot of good things in practice, but when you actually are in the game and you've got the defense, you know, these guys growling at you on the other side, it, it can be pretty scary sometimes and intimidating. So I, my two cents, uh, I, I'm a fan of Rozier overall. I feel like there's a lot of places he can improve, which hopefully they're working on currently in the spring and they worked on in the offseason. Uh, my prediction is probably that Rozier will be the starter, especially opening in the LSU game. Um, but I'm not going to count out the possibility of Nikosi Perry or possibly even Jaron Williams getting some playing time, uh, whether that be because Rozier might get pulled potentially or because we get enough of a lead that they can get some more play time. But I think the future of Miami lies with Nikosi Perry and Jaron Williams. But right now, Rozier does have the experience under his belt, which is a, a very big deal. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, talking up Miami with Brandon Cooper. You can catch him on College Football Vids. That's his YouTube channel where he talks Miami nonstop. So what excites you about this team? What concerns you about this team? And what are you looking for Saturday night at the uh, spring game? What excites me right now probably the most is our wide receivers. Uh, I feel like we have some of the fastest wide receivers in college football uh, you have Lawrence Cager coming back finally, hopefully health, healthy. Uh, you've got Harley. You've got Thomas. We've really got some of the fastest guys, period. I mean, it's very hard to argue that. Uh, so I think we're going to have uh, with that and kind of possibly hints of running more eye formation. You've got Realist George coming in at fullback. Uh, so we're going to have some bigger guys that can help us in those short yardage situations. So I'm really excited to see both of those. And I'll be honest, I don't hear a lot of people talk about this. What kind of concerns me right now is uh, our special teams play. Most importantly, our punting game. Uh, Fiegels, he's, he, I believe his dad played uh, for Miami, if I have that correct. Yes, he did. But uh, I, I like the kid. He's got a lot of potential. He's got a lot of talent. But uh, I'm hoping that he's put in some work in the offseason because he had some pretty – pretty awful punts last season. And uh, I feel like that pinning the opposing team deep, putting them in bad um, field position situations is very important. It's kind of looked over a lot of times. And I feel like that Miami really needs to improve overall, just special teams play in general, but especially in the punt game. All right. Talking Miami football with Brandon Cooper from college football vids. Uh, Brandon, we appreciate you stopping by. Uh, you're welcome back. Absolutely. And I appreciate you having me on the show. And uh, for those of you who are here watching, I'm sure you already are. But if you are not subscribed to Mark Rogers TV College Football, definitely do it because it's hard. I have put up probably one video a week and that's a ton of work. And this guy is putting in some work. He's uploading every day, it looks like. So definitely hit him with a subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, I'm just a little bit crazy. So uh, I have taken on the job of covering everybody in college football and do my very nice. best, but it's only because of guys like you, Brandon, that I bring on on a regular basis uh, because if it was my own analysis all the time, people would um, go a little crazy listening to that. So we we get a little diverse uh, opinion on here, and I obviously serve it up as well. So I appreciate the pub there, Brandon, uh, and, and obviously people that are watching on my channel uh, go over there and check out Brandon's work on college football vids. We appreciate you stopping by, Brandon. Enjoy the uh, Saturday night game. Absolutely, we will. Go Kings.